Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming to the session. Uh, my name is Shreyans Jain, and I'm a senior software engineer here at Salesforce. And today, I'm really excited to talk about developing Quip Live Apps. So before we really begin, uh, just some forward-looking statements. Uh, please make your purchase decisions based on the products and services that are available to you today. With that, uh, let's have a look at our agenda for today. Uh, it's really simple. We are just going to talk about three things. Uh, number one, uh, we will talk about what are Quip Live Apps. Second, we will see how you can build your own live app quickly. And finally, we will leave uh, with uh, some additional resources so that when you go back home, you can create your own live app. All right, with that, let's start. So live apps uh, allow you to expand the scope and functionality of the Quip platform by converting your documents into rich form of communication, allowing you to convert your documents into tools that you can use for your own custom workflows, and finally, providing you with an interface with other third-party applications so that you can have the, the live data right inside of Quip. Uh, here's one example of a live app. This is a Kanban board live app uh, that you can insert right inside your Quip document. Here's yet another example. Uh, this is a count, uh, countdown live app. And you can set in a countdown for a particular event, say, for example, a release date. And it will keep on ticking uh, you know, continuously. In fact, we have a bunch of other live apps that are available in the Salesforce App Exchange. So I would highly recommend that you go and check them out. And most of them are free, so really. All right, with that, uh, let's talk about our live app for today. So we are going to create a very simple live app. And the purpose is to just show you how easy it is to make them. Uh, so we are going to uh, make a Google Maps live app. And our end product is going to look something like this. As you can see, there's a Quip document. And there you have uh, a map inserted right inside it. Uh, this map is live. It can move around. And you know, we will see uh, how to make it. OK, so what are some of the prerequisites? Uh, well, really not that much. You just need a Quip account. Uh, you need Node on your computer. And then you need NPM. Uh, you also need some level of JavaScript expertise. Uh, and familiarity with React is helpful, but not necessary. At the end, we are going to talk about how you can create your own live apps uh, with, with using different frameworks, uh, such as jQuery. So with that, let's begin. So the first thing you will do is you'll open up a browser and go to this URL. And this is basically you know, your, uh, your org name dot quip dot com slash dev slash console. And when you'll be there, you will be presented with this screen. Uh, as you can see, uh, there is a button right there, create a live app, and we'll click on it. Now, once you do that, you'll be presented with this screen. Now, there's a bunch of things going on here, and let's not worry about all of them right now. Uh, let's just take note of the app ID, which is available right here, and keep it in our clipboard. And we will use it uh, momentarily. OK, so now we will just minimize our browser window, open up a terminal, and use NPM to install Create Quip App. As you can see, I use hyphen G because I want this particular tool to be available uh, globally. Next, uh, it's time to use uh, this newly installed tool. So I'll just use Create Quip App. And since we are going to create a mapping live application, let's just call it Map. So when you will do that and you hit Enter, uh, you will see that a new live app is being created at this particular location. And if all goes well, you will see that you have a success screen. And uh, here you will have uh, you know, the link to the latest documentation as well. Uh, with that, uh, let's close the terminal and open up a code editor. And here is the newly created live app. As you can see, there are a bunch of different folders and different files that are available to you. And we will look into them you know, one by one Really, you don't need to make that many modifications for this simple live application. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to define the manifest for our application. And you can do that by opening manifest.json file. Now, as you can see, here's, there's a bunch of metadata for your application right here. Uh, and you don't need to change a lot. Uh, the only thing you need to change is the ID. You remember we just copied it a couple minutes ago. And we go ahead and paste it right here. Uh, the other change you would need to do is to make another entry in this JSON file. And we call it as CSP sources 
basically this defines the content security policy for your live app. Uh, since we are going to be creating a Google Maps live app, we want that Google is able to contact our live application. So we kind of whitelist our uh, live app for Google so that we can get the tiles from Google. So you'll just add this entry. Uh, this is a very important step, especially if you're creating a third, third party integration. So you would replace Google's domain with uh, whatever uh, domain you're working with. And that's it. Uh, we have successfully defined the manifest for our application. Uh, let's go back uh, to our IDE. And let's see the next file that we are going to modify. So the next file uh, we will look into is the root.gsx file. If you're familiar with React, you can understand that this is a React file. And really, our goal with root.gsx is to define a root record. And, and what is a root record? Root record is the database for your live application. And you know, it really, it is the place where you would store all the information that is needed for your live app. Now, it can be a simple JavaScript object with a bunch of named properties. And each property can be of a, a native JavaScript type. For example, it can be a number, a string, a Boolean, or it can be a record or a list of records. So for our live app, since this is a very simple live app, we're just going to store one property in our database, and that is the address. So we want that when someone enters an address into a web document, we want to be able to render this particular map the next time someone else opens it. So as you can see, here's the schema. We just have one property, address, type string. With that, uh, let's go ahead and actually define the root record. As you can see, uh, defining root record is also super easy. All you need to do is you need to extend the quib.apps.root record class. And uh, since we are creating a map application, you're just calling it map root for now. You can call it anything. And you only need to implement one method. And that method is get properties. The get properties method would return the schema for your application. Like I mentioned earlier, since our, we are creating a mapping application, let's just return an address and its type, which is string. Then we go ahead and register this class using quip.apps.register class so that next time when you're calling, uh, when you want an instance of this particular class, you can just call quip.apps.getRootRecord. So let's see what happens when the app is actually initialized. Uh, when the app is initialized, the quip.apps.initialize uh, uh, method is called. And as you can see, there is a callback right there. It is called the initialization callback. And as the name suggests, it's a callback that gets fired once your app has initialized. Uh, you would see that uh, it takes in two arguments. Uh, the first one is the root node. And this is really the DOM element on which our live app is going to be mounted on. And the second one is a params object. The params object lets you to uh, pass in data from your quip document inside your live app. So let's first go ahead and get an instance of the root record. And you can do that by calling root record is equal to uh, quip.apps.getRootRecord. And the next thing we do is we check if this is the first time this app is being initialized. And that is correct. So we go ahead and set the root record's address property as an empty string. Now you can set it anything you want. Uh, but that would mean that every time you're starting your live app, uh, that address map is being rendered. So let's go ahead. Uh, and just render an empty string for now. Finally, we will just render, uh, just like any other React application, uh, we will render it on our root element. And that's it. We have successfully defined the root record. And we have also defined what happens to our application when it's initialized. So now we will go into uh, defining the business logic for our application. And all the business logic really just lives in one file, that is app.gsx. So let's go ahead and open that file now. And since, again, this is a React file, and so this might look very familiar to you. Uh, in the constructor, we are defining the initial state for our application. Now, one thing we want to do is that our React application should always be in sync with the root record, which is the database for our application. So in this particular case, we want that our state mimics the, uh, the root record. So we initialize the state address property uh, in this React app uh, from the root record. So as you can see, I call address is get root record dot get address. Now, if you remember, the first time we start this application, we render an empty string. So whenever this uh, React app is initialized, we will have nothing in the address. 
So really, there are only two cases for this application, right? So th the first case is when someone has entered an address, and the second one is that the root record is empty, and we do not have any address in our database. So this is the first case. That is, you know, our address is an empty string. And in that particular case, we want to be able to get the address from the user. Now, we can get the address from the user using the simple UI. So I, all I have is uh, just uh, an input box and a submit button. So let's go ahead and actually see how you would render that. So you can see in the render method for this application, the first thing I have is I'm checking the state's address property. Now, if you recall, the root record's em uh, address property was an empty string. So the state's address property is an empty string. And that is why this particular block of code will actually execute. As you can see, we have two things that we are defining. The first one is the input box that we just saw. And then there is a submit button, uh, which does something on when you click on it, uh, because you have defined an on-click handler. And uh, really, all that on-click handler needs to do is to take the address from the input box and send it to our database, that is the root record, and at the same time, update the state for our React application. And that's exactly what we do here. As you can see, it's really, really simple. We get the address. The first thing we do is we set the state for our app so that the app's address property is same as uh, whatever address someone entered into the, into the input box. And next, we go ahead and actually save this into the database. That is, we persist this information by calling address uh, with whatever address was entered. Uh, so that's it. That we just successfully completed the first case. And now it's the time to look into the second use case, which is when somebody had already entered an address. Now let's say I have a Quip document, and I inserted this particular live app. And uh, I uh, stored the address as Disneyland. Now when my friend opens up that particular document, I want that they should have uh, the, the rendition of this particular address. So they should actually see a map. So this is the second case. But before we really get into it, let's first see how maps are actually rendered using the Google Maps API. So the Google Maps API is really, you know, really simple. All you need to do is you need to construct the map URL. And as you can see, the map URL is just a concatenation of the Google Maps uh, API's endpoint, followed by an API key that you can get from that URL right there. And, uh, uh, just one query parameter called Q. And this Q uh, basically has the address that you want to render on your map. So it's really simple. And with that information in mind, let's go ahead and implement case second. So the second case is that our root record already has an address. So the root record already has Disneyland in it. In that case, our state's address property has Disneyland in it. And this particular block of code will execute. And as you can see, uh, we are just using an iframe now with its source attribute equal to the Google Maps URL. So really simple way of uh, rendering a Google Map. And that's it. So we successfully completed both of the cases. Uh, now is the time to do some testing. So let's minimize our editor and open up the terminal again. And you would run this particular command, that is npm run build. Uh, to package your application. And when you run this, uh, you will see that your app is actually packaged into a neat little file called app.ele. Now we will minimize the terminal, copy the app.ele file, and now open up a browser, uh, the same browser again. Now here on this screen, uh, you can add the app.ele file onto your project. So you can see, uh, first you would go to upload new version, and you will click right there, upload app.ele, and then you can upload the newly generated app.ele file. Once you do that, uh, you can put in email addresses for your friends to test it on this particular page. And if everybody is happy and you are happy, it's time to release to all your users. And releasing this live app to all your users is also very simple. All you need to do is press this button. And that's it. You have successfully release a Google Maps live app to all your customers. So here are some resources uh, that you can use. Uh, the first one is the, the GitHub repository for this particular 
uh, application that we just discussed. And you know, I mean, I highly encourage to you to take the picture of this slide because if you are going to create your own live app, it would be really helpful. Uh, the second link is for the official documentation. And finally, we also have a trailhead uh, that is available right there. So with that, let's uh, have a look at a demo for the app that we just created. So let's say I have this quip document, and you know, it has the information about my talk for today. So, but one information is missing, and that is the location. So I'll go ahead and fix that. So all I need to do is I do add map. And as you can see, right now my address root record is empty. And that's why the first case is being rendered. That is an input box with a button. So now let me go ahead and enter the address. So we are in the Moscone Center. And I will go ahead and click on Add Map. And there you go. Now we have a fully functional map right inside our Quip document. Now, I just want to show you that this map is actually persistent. That is, if anyone else will open this document, they will see the same thing. So for that, I will open up another browser window. And I will go to the same document. And there you go. As you can see, we have a live map. Uh, I can actually zoom out, zoom in, and you know, do anything with it that I would do with a regular Google map. So with that, uh, we have time for a couple of questions. I really appreciate you coming to the talk and listening. And I can't wait to see what you create with this information in mind. Uh, thank you. Okay. Uh, so the question is, is it possible to create a live app which includes a section of, is it another Quip document or the same? Uh, like an action button? Um, it is actually possible. And it, it's a it's little bit hacky, you know. Um, Actually, you could use the Quips. So there's another API that is the Quip Apps API uh, that you would use to get data from another Quip document. And you can actually render it using then the Live Apps API. So that's certainly possible. Uh, another way would be to, since every Quip document has a URL, you can simply iframe that whole document inside another one. But probably that's not what you want to do, right? Uh, anything else? All right. Thank you.